And on the line with us, I'm very pleased to have Stephen A. Medina. He is an attorney working as a public defender, uh, pro bono in this case, doing environmental work, uh, and uh, no website or Skype address. Uh, uh, Stephen, uh, welcome to the program. Thank you very much. I've uh, long enjoyed your program. Appreciate well, your work. Well, thank you. That's that's very kind of you. Um, I, you have been working on a project that has to do with the Koch brothers' environmental corrup corruption in Florida. Do I have that right? That's correct. Tell us involving the Saint the Saint Johns River. Okay. Tell, give us the story. Okay. Well, the Saint Johns River is a it's a beautiful river. It, it's uh, unusual in that it flows from the uh, south to the north, and it um, it empties out in the Jacksonville area. Um, further to the south, it, um, but still within the um, the saltwater influence area, there has long been a um, a paper mill that dumped into a creek that in turn wrote, uh, um, dumped into this beautiful river, and um, it's currently owned by, um, in essence, by the Koch brothers. And this is a Georgia Pacific mill? That's correct. Yeah, that's one of the correct. companies that they, the Coke Industries owns, I believe. Right. Yeah, right. And a few years ago, um, the uh, local residents and environmental groups learned that there was going to be uh, the issuance and um, uh, construction of a, uh, of a pipeline and the, the issuance of, uh, related to a uh, private easement. And this was news to uh, local residents and environmental groups. And uh, I was contacted, and um, I agreed to look into it. And I found two very important uh, flaws, as I saw it. And uh, the first is that um, this project would involve very large mixing zones right in the middle of the river, uh, to build a pipeline that dumps right into the uh, into the middle of the St. John's River, and these mixing zones, I felt and still feel, are taking property from the public without any. Wait a second. Wait a second. What, what's a mixing zone? A mixing zone in this particular situation is uh, a area, the defined area of the river that will have various bad things dumped into it, including affluents that are chronically toxic. So this is toxic material. It's not safe for human or animal uh, consumption. And it basically is stuff that's it's dangerous. So and they so they run the pipe out to the middle of the river and they dump the poison into the river at that point and they call that the mixing zone because it's mixing right. the poison with the river water. Um, it, right. This they, is the this is the strategy of dilution rather than remediation or repair or whatever. That's right, and there are ways that they could do a much much better job back in the mill, but it's much cheaper uh, to use the, the public's property as a dumping ground. And what's really important here, and this isn't necessarily the case everywhere, is that Florida has the constitutional public trust doctrine. And so I, as a resident of Florida, and everybody else in the state of Florida, is supposed to be a beneficial owner of this property, and we don't like them dumping on our property uh, without, uh, we don't like them dumping on our property. We certainly don't think they should do it unless they've demonstrated it's in the public interest. And that's where the second issue came, is that we learned that in 2005, under the Jeb Bush administration, a grossly misleading newspaper notice was used in the uh, local Palatka newspaper that nobody uh, could understand if they were to possibly get a hold of the black newspaper at this particular time. And so this was this was something that but at some level um, intentionally designed to confuse the public. So this and, was a what a, 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 a legally required notice to the public that we're going to start poisoning your water, but they buried it in a way that was not uh, understandable as such. Absolutely. That's okay. that's absolutely right. And so this is not rocket science legally and so we we maintain in the florida supreme court that there were two defects number one is that if you're going to use um, public property for dumping you must get a, an easement that encompasses these mixing zones because their easement only encompass the pipe property itself and not the area that would be diminished because of these mixing zones so we know that we know their confines 
and we said, you know, they basically need to uh, rent this land they're going to be diminishing uh, from us. And the second thing they need to do is they need to give constitutionally appropriate and understandable, uh, as opposed to grossly misleading, public notice so that everybody who's interested who's in Florida administrative law, substantially interested, parties have a right to pub- participate in public hearing, but that they can never exercise their right if they never learn about it. So mm-hmm. I believe that this was an intentionally misleading uh, conspiracy and that um, you know, we, we, we should have been able to get to a bottom, the bottom of it. Unfortunately, there you enter uh, the machinations of uh, not only the captive agency in the Florida Department of Environmental Protection, but really you have a very uh, interesting uh, set of players over in the judicial branch. Um, and I can go into that if you want me to. But, uh, but, but bottom line is Florida, uh, when you get over in the judicial branch, um, it can become very interesting with the players that are involved, especially when a lot of them are in Tallahassee, which is this, the center of state government. And right. the, the, the current so are judges not, are uh, judges elected or appointed in Florida? Uh, judges at the uh, county level are elected. Uh, judges at the appellate level are appointed but then retained. Right. So Florida. you've got Republican appointees at the appellate level, and you've got... At the at the county level, the ability of uh, you know billionaires to to promote the candidacy of judges, so you end up with a judiciary that is hostile to the rights of the people and friendly to the rights of the corporations. Is that what you're saying? That, that's, right. That, that's right. And there's you know there's it gets even more interesting. I, I have to be a little bit careful because I am a, uh, a member of the Florida Bar, so I'm not supposed to say things that would quote-unquote, or something along these lines to disparage the reputation of the uh, judiciary. But in this particular situation, I'll go ahead and say that it's, uh, it's, uh, it's smelly. Okay. Yeah, it's problematic, let's call it. Yes, um, it, we're talking with Stephen Medina, an attorney. Are you, are you suing Coke Industries or Georgia Pacific or the Coke Brothers? or Who, who, who are the parties to this? Well, what, what, who the parties were, were the, uh, are the current governor and cabinet. Um, oh, but, for allowing this to happen? Yeah. For, so you're for going after happened. Rick Scott and his buddies. That, that, that's right. Rick Scott and the other members of the, the cabinet who were elected officials. Here's the bottom line is in Florida, um, we, they are the trustees. Right. So our point is trustees should behave like trustees. No private property owner would let people dump uh, 60 million gallons a day of toxic wastewater on their property without expecting substantial compensation. Right. Only the only the citizenry is supposed to is supposed to be idiots, right. and so right. uh, we we don't like being. So Rick idiots. Scott is playing you for suckers, and you're going to take him on. Now, uh, Stephen, is there are there EPA regulations that that minimize the ability of of Coke Industries or in this case Georgia Pacific to to just pour even more poison into the river? I mean, are they operating within the boundaries of the law here? Well, they have had, they've had some compliance problems under the uh, EPA and the uh, DDP regulatory uh, side of the equation. But the point here is that this is proprietary. This is not regulatory, even uh. if it uh, can jump through hoops. And by the way, issuing things like mixing zones is perfectly fine uh, to the regulatory people. It doesn't matter to them that it's going to make a chronically toxic area that you can't uh, fish or swim in, or, or, you know, nobody with the right mind would fish or swim in it. Right. Um, and I, I do want to make clear, though, is that this past fall, we filed a petition for certiorari with the U.S. Supreme Court, uh, and they denied certiorari. So basically... They denied legal, to hear your case, in other words. Yeah, the, the legal uh, road, we're, we're at the end as far as what we can do as citizens, but what we can do... Um, as far as the citizens legally, but what we can do is put pressure on the, the federal uh, district of attorney, the federal district of attorney, <laughs> having trouble talking on the radio here. But anyway, we need to put pressure on the federal district attorney to do a proper Your federal prosecutor, your, your local. Exactly. Yeah. Why, why this was done? Why was this phony uh, uh, notice used back in 2005? 
Right. I'd like to see that person who who signed off on that deposed. About Interesting. That. So, uh, Stephen, we, we've, we've got to wrap this up. But uh, what can people who are listening or watching right now do to help you in the work that you're doing? Well, the first thing is contact FloridaCleanWaterNetwork.org. And um, FloridaCleanWaterNetwork.org is, well, the network is involved also working with um, other parties, such as the Seminole Tribe, they were involved in a similar situation with a toxic criteria in, in Florida that involves um, some faulty notice in, in that situation. So mm -hmm. the, contact FloridaCleanWaterNetwork.org. And, and, and there's also a very good series, if you want to learn the details, at Daily Cost by Leslie Salzillo. Okay. If, let's see, put up Daily Cost, Steve Medina, M-E-D-I-N-A. You'll find more information than you want. Sounds like a plan. Stephen Medina, Stephen A. Medina, an, an attorney working on behalf of, of the people of the state of Florida, in my opinion. Stephen, uh, you're doing God's work. Thanks so much for coming by and telling us about it. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Good talking. We'll be back.